What is up, wildlings? Colin here, the wild CEO. The most common intermittent fasting questions. Let's do a quick intro to IEF, or I guess not even an intro, but some of the common questions people ask. There's a lot of these. I'll give you, I will give you an intro to, to IEF. I'll give you an intro to how to think about intermittent fasting or time restricted eating and how most people get it wrong. So before we get to these questions right now, let me just give you that. The thing about intermittent fasting that everybody gets wrong is they think it's about calorie restriction. You can do intermittent fasting and eat 10,000 calories a day if you wanted to, right? You would not be calorie restricting, but you would be intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is just about the time at which you have fasting and eating, right? You put your meals in a feeding window and then you have your fasting window. That's all it is. So in this feeding window, let's say it's four hours, two hours, one meal, four, whatever it is within that feeding window, you can eat as much food as you want, right? The amount of food you eat is its own thing. It's its own throttle, right? That's completely up to you. Now, I'm not suggesting if you do IF, you should eat whatever you want during the feeding window. I'm just explaining what most people get wrong about intermittent fasting is they think it's about calorie restriction. It's not. It's about calorie timing. The fasting window where you get all those benefits from hormones and insulin sensitivity and the hormones coming down and you give your body a break, you give your digestion a break, et cetera, that's where all the benefit is found. The feeding window is when you eat. Now, I recommend during a feeding window to eat one to two meals, all right? Some people can do three. It also depends. If you're doing an eight-hour feeding window, if you're doing like a four-hour, a five-hour, you have to figure out what your body, your appetite prefers. So intermittent fasting is saying like, Every day, I'm going to eat, let's say, for, for simplicity, let's do an 18-6. That's what I started with. It's probably what I do on average today. I'm going to skip breakfast. Like, for example, it's 1 p.m. I haven't eaten breakfast. And I'm going to I'm gonna eat my first meal between 4 and 5. I go and work. I work the whole day. And then I get home and I have my first meal. Sometimes it's 3 p.m. Sometimes it's 4. Sometimes I wait till dinner time. My first meal then breaks my fast. That starts my feeding window. So I eat that first meal. And then probably five or so hours later, I have another smaller meal and that's it. I'm done for the day. And then I stop eating again and then I repeat the process the next day. And what this looks like is I have about an eight hour feeding window of which I've had food. I eat two meals within that feeding window. And then I don't eat at night. I don't eat in the morning and I don't eat around lunchtime. And then I break my fast at you know dinner time, right? Or, or the standard dinner time. That's my preferred way to do it. Some people like to eat breakfast. And then they like to have like 12 hours and then eat dinner. You can kind of have like a middle gap. That doesn't really work for me because I like to get that 16 hour fast in. You know, the 16 to 18 hour fast is where a lot of the research suggests you get a lot of those benefits for insulin sensitivity and of course, maybe fat loss and things like that. Like you give your body a chance to really cut into fat stores and burn off fat and get into ketosis and things like that. Whereas if you're doing like only an eight hour fasting window, uh, I just don't think you're going to dip into that as much. Your hormones are still going to kind of be elevated throughout early in that process. And you're not going to dip into, uh, you know, ketosis and burning off ketones and fat for energy as much. So I prefer 16 to 8. For me, that's skipping breakfast, skipping lunch, starting breakfast basically at dinner. All right. Now let's talk about some of these most common fasting questions. And I hope with that basic summary plus these, you'll have a pretty good idea of what intermittent fasting is and how to implement it in your life. And I will say that you should implement it in your life one way or the other. It is a first principle of human biology. It is not a fad. It is not a weight loss gimmick or hack. I don't have weight to lose, right? I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm trying to just be healthy and follow my natural appetite and live a long time. Intermittent fasting and at times calorie restriction, which you can use in conjunction with intermittent fasting, but it's not a prerequisite, like I said, have tons and tons of well-researched benefits for longevity. So I just wanna be healthy, feel good, live a long time. And I'm never hungry in the mornings, so I don't eat. And if I'm not hungry early on, I'll wait and I'll eat later. Follow your appetite. When your body comes down to a baseline and you're not in the hunger hormone, constantly eating and snacking, standard American way of eating nonsense basically, when you exit that, your appetite takes care of it. Your, your appetite is the cue that you should eat, and if you're not hungry, you don't eat. It's very simple. It simplifies everything, all right? So let's get a few of these done, and then I'll let you go. Subscriber question. So I have a question about intermittent fasting butter coffee. 
I've been trying to not eat after six in the evening and having my butter coffee the next morning and not eating till about noon. I know I've asked you before and you said that putting protein powder in my coffee would break the fast. I've been using your oils and butter in it, but I want to know is does your raw cocoa powder and vanilla, both of which I have and use, break my fast? I love it for the flavor and antioxidants. I use a bit of the sweetener, stevia, etc. So I'm a bit confused on what breaks the fast. I know my cup of coffee has some calories in it, but mostly from fat, but it sustains me until noon. Okay. So there's two ways to think about this. When you add a sweetener, you're way more increasing the likelihood that you're going to, you know, break your fast because you can have a hormonal response to that. Your body can send something like stevia, which is like hundreds of times sweeter than table sugar. And it says, oh, this is sweet. And then what can happen is an insulin response because that's what your body's designed to do when glucose or what it thinks is glucose comes into your body. So sweeteners are tricky. We don't really have very well researched research studies on this. Like some research suggests that Stevie doesn't spike insulin, but I know people that it for sure does. I mean, they literally test with a glucose monitor and things like that. So it's that tricky thing where if you can eventually get to a point where you're not doing any sweeteners, that's what you want to do. You, you want to get to that place where you're not doing any sweeteners and kind of stay there. That's one way to think about it. Now, when it comes to just fat, this is another thing. Uh, fat is generally not something that spikes insulin, but some will say a certain amount of fat can break your fast because your body can still respond in a certain way. Uh, you know, this is one of those things that again, like if you're not doing a ton of it, like a, like 100 or 200 calories, you're still within a range that's considered fasting based on a lot of the research. I mean, there's some research that shows that even 500 calories or less at a meal is considered fasting or you're getting some of the benefits of fasting. So for me, it's if you're doing a morning butter coffee, for example, or some kind of keto coffee or something, and it sustains you, you can go without breakfast, it fuels you, uh, then you should do that. And you should just make that part of your routine and be completely fine with it. This whole, is it breaking my fast is a little overblown. I think it's more about, the question you should ask yourself is more, can I use this to sustain my eating routine, like my plan, what I'm trying to accomplish? That's the most important thing. Because if you are gonna do this for a month and you're not going to enjoy the process or you're going to like struggle with appetite and things like that. And then you just start eating breakfast again, or you start getting bagels and doing other crap you shouldn't be doing. Then does it really matter that you may have broken your fast with a couple hundred calories, right? Because those couple hundred calories helped you stay committed to your plan. So as with everything, we have these levers that we have to kind of throttle up and down and decide what's the cost benefit analysis, what's worth it, what's not. And when it comes to this sweeteners, yes, be very, careful with and pay attention to your biology for sure. You can still use them though. You can still find a happy medium and use them, right? I know plenty of people do and we have tons of customers that do. When it comes to fat, same thing, but but even less of a concern, right? A little bit of butter, maybe some MC2 oil, uh, maybe even some actual cream, not a huge deal. I would just say in the mornings, avoid milk because the lactose and the sugar and it's very insulogenic. So if you're using milk, you're going to probably remove a lot of the benefits that you would have from a morning, you know, fasting routine because the milk is so insulinogenic, right? All right. So let's get to another one. Colin, excellent timing with me for me with this article. I've been doing the fasting for the new year. I don't eat after dinner between five and six, have my butter coffee the next morning and don't eat until noon. Let me ask you, in order to get more protein in because of the weight training I do, does a scoop away in the morning? Oh, <laughs> same question. Uh, yeah, a scoop away technically does, but it also doesn't. So honestly, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. That's, that's just my simple there. So let's just do this last one. I've been fasting for 20 to 24 hours once or twice a week for the last year and really like it, but I've always been annoyed with juggling my workouts to avoid fasting on the same day. I am looking forward to trying the 16, eight plan out of curiosity. Do you exercise inside your eight hour eating window or outside of it? I love fasted training. I do not like training with food in my belly. Every time I eat, even if it's a few hours before training, I know it's gonna wear me down. I know I'm gonna be sluggish. And once you once you convert to fasted training, where you literally work out and then maybe your first meal is after that, like maybe you work out three or 4 p.m. and then dinner, you know? Uh, of course, you can obviously work out after you eat, but I just prefer fasted training, especially if you're doing anything that includes speed and movement. Like whether I was doing CrossFit, racquetball, or some kind of sport like that, I don't want food in my belly. Like di digestion is a very energy intensive process and it does slow you down. It does, you know, we all know that feeling. You eat too much, you feel lethargic, tired, whatever. Your body is expending a lot of energy to process that food and extract from it nutrients. 
train in the fasted state. And if you're doing a 20 to 24 hour fast a day once a week, amazing. I would work out those days. Even more benefit. Get into that hyper fat burning mode. Get deep, deep, deep in there. That's going to be it. Wild CEO. Get on the wild newsletter over at wildfoods.co. I believe it's at the top. I got to find actually where to put that. Or look, it's right down here below in this article. And if you have any questions, comments about fasting, you can always send us an email. Send me personally, Colin at wildfoods.co. Anything we can do to help you on your wild lifestyle journey of health, fitness, nutrition, longevity. That's what we're here to help you do. I'll see you in the next one.